Hey guys, welcome back to Chamberlain Family Farms. So today I'm on site one and we're gonna be making a kiln. Now, for those who don't know what a kiln is, it is a, uh, it's kind of like an oven where you, uh, where you make like clay pots and stuff like that and it heats it up to where you can actually use them, make them useful. You can also make bricks and other clay things like that. So that's what we're doing today. If you guys haven't yet, uh, hit that thumbs up and subscribe, hit that bell button. Please do so, so you guys don't miss an episode. So again, like I said, today we're doing a kiln and we're in Southern Indiana, so we are loaded with clay. Now we got two types of clay here in Southern Indiana. We got red clay and we got gray clay. So there's a little bit difference between the two. Both you can make stuff out of. We are gonna use the red clay today. We're gonna to use some of the, the clay from where I dug out that cellar hole. We're still waiting on some materials so we can uh, get on that project. But we're gonna go ahead and use some of this clay and make a kiln. All right, so you're gonna need three things at least to start off. You're gonna need clay. You're gonna need water and you're gonna need a board. So, <clears throat> like I said, there's different ways you guys can do, make your own kiln. A lot of people make them out of bricks. We don't have any spare bricks at this time. So we may go ahead and uh, make some bricks to make a better kiln later, a more permanent one. So this board that we're gonna use, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make like a big O circle with clay, probably about an inch, inch and a half thick or more and then we're gonna put some holes in it. And then we're just gonna let it bake in the sun, let it completely dry out. And that there is gonna be our center. So underneath of it, we'll put the fire, you know, your sticks and everything. And then it'll be kind of a dome where it comes up with clay. We'll build it up around it. And then we'll have, a, we'll use the board again and we'll make a covering for the top of it. That way we can, of course, all the smoke and everything's gonna go up to the top. So we want a little bit of air being able to go through, but we wanna be able to control the temperature inside of it as well. So, so again, you're gonna need clay, board, water. All right, so we're gonna use four things. I'm using a shovel. You don't have to, you can be as primitive as you want, but I'm not about that if we got the resources, so. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a hole somewhat in the middle of this clay pile here. And what you wanna do is you wanna soften it up as much as you can. Now you may find roots, just throw them out. If you find any rocks, throw them out as well. If you guys want, you can actually uh, stomp it in. It might actually be easier to do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> what you're wanting is you're wanting pliable. Pliable clay, so. That's really funny, Daddy. Is that very funny? Yeah. Are you funny, Daddy? Are you funny? Am I funny? Yeah. So you can see we got some pretty close to being done, so we'll go ahead and we'll scoop some of that out. Now, if you guys live in a you got access to a creek with hills and everything you should be able to go along that creek when it's dry and actually dig into the uh, sides of the bank and you should be able to get plenty of clay there without having to actually dig a hole 
And again, you do not want to use dirt or anything like that. You just want as pure, as clay as you can get. All right. So whenever you're making your center, you're gonna want a board because you need something firm. And if you go using something like a vinyl or something really, really smooth, it's gonna stick to it and it's gonna cause a problem for you to get it off. Now you might be able to use it if you put like a, put some sand down underneath of it where you can kind of uh, move it around some. I'm just going to kind of go around and kind of somewhat smooth around the sides, son. Again, it don't have to be perfect by no means. Yay. So all I'm doing now is I'm kind of going along. I'm probably going to make it closer to two inches. But I want to make sure it's two inches all the way across. I don't want to have a weak spot. When I go put weight on this, it ends up breaking it in half. All right, so I got it fairly even now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting some holes in it. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow the, the heat to come up through there and cook the, uh, the clay pots or the brick or whatever we decide to make in there. You probably wanna leave probably at least a couple inches apart from the holes. I don't know if there's a correct amount to do or anything like that, but I wouldn't imagine it matter too much. But I do know the more holes you got, the brittle it's gonna make it, so keep that in mind too. All right, so that's what she looks like right now. And we're just gonna let this set and bake in the sun and uh, completely dry out. All right, while this is drying, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna mix some more clay with water, and we're gonna go ahead and start uh, forming our base. So again, this base at the beginning, this is where the fire is gonna be directly. Now we'll probably have the fire where it actually comes this way, but I got this mound right here in the way right now, but the opening will probably be coming from this way because the garden's over here. We don't want no flame coming over there. And then whenever this dries, we'll pick this up and we'll set it right on top of it. Get a fire going and then we'll just kind of keep going up. And then at that point, we'll go all the way around it. What are you doing? Well, like I said earlier, <clears throat> I'm making a kiln for pottery. About got the fire pit ready. It's like in a horseshoe. Once that dries enough, probably tomorrow or the next day, we'll put that up here. And then we'll continue on, except whenever we put that on, we'll go all the way around. And we'll go up to probably about here. And then I'll, <clears throat> I'll do something similar to that, except I'll cut it right in the middle, and maybe with a hole right in the middle, and that'll be the top covers. But once we get this on, we can go ahead and start a fire and start getting this hard.
All right, so what I did is I just put the whole board up there with it. Went ahead and I started the fire. <clears throat> and you can see I went ahead and I started putting some here on top. So it's now starting to kind of burn through it a little bit. It's not like a huge fire, but hopefully this will harden good enough. And we'll just let it smolder through the night. Hopefully it don't fall in whenever we come back tomorrow. All right, so what we're doing is the bottom where it's all sitting on the front, it's completely hardened and some around the front is hardened. So what we're doing now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to, because the fire has died down a little bit up here, but it's still really hot. We're going to go ahead and build this arch up a little bit better. Go ahead and let it start uh, heating up. Then also been going along and uh, fixing these cracks from the moisture and the shrinking and and all that so but hopefully later we can come back and hopefully get it up to about here anyway and then we can worry about some kind of a cover or top for it and then all we got to do is get it real hot and then we should be about ready to start doing pottery or bricks or whatever we want to do very cool All right, so it's the next day. It didn't cave in. Some of it did dry and harden up. There's some little cracks in it this morning. I went ahead and I filled them. And then of course I did some more. And you can kind of see where the board is. It'll come up about that much. But what we're trying to do now is because they're talking about rain either tomorrow or the next day. So I've got to hurry up and get this hardened up the best I can. It's been burning for a little while underneath there. I was putting the mud on there while it was burning underneath. But now I gotta get this top hardened up so I can continue to go up. So you can see I put boards up on top along the side. And what it's doing now is it's actually getting pretty close to catching on fire. It's been a while since I did this and it's just now getting ready to catch a fire. You can tell by how the smoke's really, really increased on top. So what I'm hoping is going to happen, I'm hoping that that's kind of baked it on the inside really good by putting them boards on top. That way you don't burn it all real quick and then make it crack and just fall apart. So, so far that bottom piece where we're going to be putting the, the pottery and the bricks and stuff on that we're making, it's still there. I don't know how bad cracks are or anything yet. We'll fix them. As long as it stays, it'll be fine. What I'm hoping is, is this was going to catch on fire. It's going to go ahead and burn. It's going to go ahead and burn this. I'm hoping all the way around. And then what's ever left, we're just, we'll take mud and we'll cover it up, bring it out another inch or two in thickness. And then of course <clears throat> we'll come up probably double wh where we did, where we left off. And then we can start working on the top and after that we should be ready to go yeah we'll have to keep burning it we we got to make the we got to make the mud hard before we can actually use it for pottery so and we got flamage And yeah, most of these boards here, <clears throat> they was just piled up around the place. And so we're kind of killing two, two birds with one stone, cleaning up the property, then also using it to, uh, to harden this kiln. All right, so this is day three. So we still got to fix this. I've seen that this here is kind of loose. We want to try to keep that there. Went ahead and I cleaned out the holes. So you can see where it's going to come up. But you can hear that. That's It's completely dried out. It's hardened. So, and then some of the sides, they're starting to kind of hard too in here. And this should be big enough for, for some small pots and maybe a few brick. 
that we can burn at a time. But first thing I gotta do is I gotta mix some more mud. We're gonna repair this. I'll try to get down and see if I need to go underneath and fix anything underneath here because you can't really see very well. And then also on the front, so whenever we're feeding this, we don't want to hit this with the bore because all that's going to do is it's going to break the bottom and it's going to fall back down. So we need to get some more of this and come straight over. So that way we don't hit that no more. And we can always dig this out down here below to make it deeper if we want to get some bigger logs and stuff in later on. So, and then of course we'll come back and uh, some of this is still wet as you can see. We'll go ahead and we'll fill this in, all these cracks, with some more uh, clay. And then after we get that all done, we'll heat it back up again. And, and then we should be ready to go. Now, the last thing we'll do is we'll actually put a, a, a clay top. Which what I'll probably do is grab that board there. Set it on here and actually form it as a big square right on top of this. And then I'll just I'll just burn it off. And then at some point in time we're gonna have to build a fire on the outside so we can get this outside board that's sticking that was holding this, which the inside's already burnt off, so I ain't worried about that. But I do want to get them sides. I don't want nobody tripping over it or hitting it and uh, potentially cracking or breaking it after it's finished. So that's what we're doing today. smoking again and again when it's wet like this and you get a fire it's gonna crack a sign but that's all right like I said we can just keep putting mud on it and make it thicker and thicker but I want to get that hard so I can get the top made thank you for watching Chamberlain Family Farms you can contact us at chamberlainff at gmail.com. You can also see us on Facebook, Chamberlain Family Farms. We hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe.